Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy, the show that talks 100% LA Galaxy soccer. We're glad you could join us. Now it's time to sit back and relax as your hosts navigate through the twisting, turning, but never boring world, the five-time MLS Cup champion, LA Galaxy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com, coming to you live from Corner of the Galaxy Studios on Thursday, November 8th, just after the LA Galaxy exit interviews and, of course, getting you ready for a lengthy offseason that will include a new general manager. Uh, it includes a firing that we haven't talked about since Monday. Remember, all this stuff happens on Tuesday morning, so uh, we have a bunch of stuff to get to. So uh, talking about Pete Bainis getting fired, we're talking about a new GM, that uh, name that has been floated and perhaps the interest is real and already happening behind the scenes. We'll give you a little bit of an update there. And then I have, it's an audio show galore. I have 41 different clips of three different people from the exit interviews. And of course, if you want the complete transcript of everything that everybody said, uh, just head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com where you can find almost 6,000 words that were transcribed by Larry and myself uh, to get you every single word there. All right, so that's what you're looking at right now for this show. Uh, we don't know how long it'll go. It's an off-season show. They don't last a full hour sometimes, and sometimes they last 90 minutes. So we'll see where we settle out on everything as we uh, transition into an off-season that, that might actually be busier than, uh, than the, the regular season in terms of all the moves that are going around. Uh, before we get anywhere, uh, let's start with obviously some horrible events that happened around the Southland uh, in Thousand Oaks. Uh, I just want everyone to know that my, my thoughts and are definitely with those affected by the shooting in Thousand Oaks late on Wednesday night, and that's just a, a really horrible situation, and uh, it's not something that you, you necessarily want to bring up whenever you're I know everybody's trying to escape through a, uh, through a soccer podcast, but uh, I just want everybody to know that here at Corner of the Galaxy, all of our thoughts are with those who are affected, uh, those who died, those who were injured. Uh, we hope you get well very soon, and if you're in anywhere near the Thousand Oaks, Oaks area, I know you're also de dealing with some wildfires right now as well, so stay safe out there, Thousand Oaks. Uh, Corner of the Galaxy, our thoughts are certainly there uh, with you. Now to maybe a, a little bit better news now that I brought everything down after uh, I thought a pretty exciting open there. Um, let's talk real quick. I'm wearing a shirt right now uh, from the Gardena Panthers. All right, the Gardena High School uh, Panthers are getting ready to start their preseason. I wanted to thank uh, Alan. Alan uh, got me this shirt. I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to support uh, Gardena Panthers as they get ready for their preseason that starts uh, on Friday. So Friday, November 9th, that's when they'll start. So Alan, thanks for the shirt. Uh, it fits great. Uh, hopefully it looks good on camera. If you haven't seen it, uh, and if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can always go over to YouTube uh, or cornerofthegalaxy.com. Click on that live button right there, and you can find usually last week's show stays up there for almost the entire week until I get ready to set up uh, the next Thursday show. All right, here we go. Let's uh, dive now into the LA Galaxy, and like I said, uh, a lot of news breaking, a lot of things happening. We uh, we got you prepped on Monday night for the exit interviews. Kevin Baxter and I, I think, did an okay job uh, of trying to prepare you for what we thought might happen. Um, there was a lot of signaling, uh, at least we thought, um, from behind the scenes that perhaps there would be a good resolution to the Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, story and saga and whether Zlatan will be coming back. Uh, I'll tell you right now that we would definitely sit here and tell you that um, I feel positive about Zlatan. You're going to hear a bunch of his audio. In fact, I have almost all of his audio clips. I, I think we'll get through most of it tonight. Uh, you're going to hear his audio. You can hear how he acts. You can see the mood that he was in. He was in a good mood when he talked to us. Um, all these things are, are good things, but uh, there was other things that happened on this, and, and certainly, you know, you have to transition to the news about Pete Viennes. Um, this is not a surprise. Kevin and I, I think, have been preparing you for this probably since 12 months ago. Um, you know, if you're if you're really paying attention, I, I think the Galaxy score about 12 months too slow on this particular move. Uh, Pete Viennes. Ramley, uh, as we've said, not necessarily very popular with the players, uh, was never popular with a guy named Bruce Arena, uh, who we're certainly going to talk about a bunch tonight as well. Um, and, you know, you look at the position that he was put in, the VP of Soccer Operations, he was acting as GM in the 2017 season. Um, that was a complete failure. He, he sort of was moved slightly to the side and, and laterally. Um, and while they sort of took him away from the general manager position back to that VP of soccer ops, uh, he, he wasn't a great fit there. Uh, you know, round peg, square hole. Um, and I'm not sure he was the one that uh, you wanted anywhere near the LA Galaxy. So 
what happened was uh, that uh, all of us beat reporters, uh, we call, I don't know, I'm sure everybody knows, the beat reporters are the guys who cover a specific beat or a specific team. Um, you know, for me, the beat is the LA Galaxy. For Kevin, his beats are, you know, the LA Galaxy, LAFC, U.S. Soccer, and uh, both the men's and women's team. Uh, and actually, he covers some world soccer there, too. So he's sort of got the soccer beat going on over there. Uh, but my beat and a lot of the other beats are uh, a lot of the other writers that are around the L.A. Galaxy are L.A. Galaxy beat writers. These are the guys who are there, you know, every single game, who are in the locker room after every single game, who go to trainings. Uh, most of those guys get to training way more than I'm able to, uh, usually once a week for those guys. Uh, but, you know, I try to get to training as much as I can, uh, knowing that this isn't my full time, quote unquote, job. Um, so that's, that's, that's what it is. These are the beat reporters. So as the beat reporters were driving up to, uh, StubHub Center for a 9 a.m. Uh, exit interview, they put out the press release at about 8, 18 or 8, 8, 13, um, that Pete Vianis had been fired. Now it was horrible timing for us who are beat writers who actually want to cover the team. And what that allowed to happen is anybody who wasn't actually going to this event was able to pick up that news, write their articles, start working on their reaction. Um, the benefit to us as beat reporters was maybe we didn't get it out first, and we certainly didn't. I think uh, Stephen Goff from the Washington Post got, got uh, you know, was posting about it well before I did. Um, but what it allowed us to do was at least get some reaction uh, from the players and from Chris Klein of these exit interviews. Um, they were just exit interviews. Uh, let me describe the scene for you. I don't know. Some of you have been to the Champions Lounge, I'm sure. Some of you haven't been. Some of you walked through the players' tunnels. Some of you haven't. Um, you know, as you see the players come out onto the field, there's a tunnel there, and as it comes back, it, it turns a right-hand corner if you're walking back. In the right-hand corner, there's a glass section that has the Champions Lounge, which is a bar area, um, and then it has a countertop area, which allows the players to walk by and people to get autographs. It's very nice. Um, I really like it. I've never been down there during a game or I've never been down there during, you know, any sort of event, but I walk by it all the time and I see some of you, I say hi. So it's great. Especially Sarah. I always see Sarah. Um, so whenever you're looking at, uh, at this setup, that's where it was. It was not in a press conference room. So trying to stream anything or do anything like that was, pro was out of the question. I think the galaxy put it there for a reason. Um, and that exit interviews are a fairly common thing to happen across sports teams, all right? This is something that happens after a season, and if you imagine that you have, like, a baseball roster for, for Major League Baseball, you have a ton of guys that you want to talk to. It really allows reporters to go in and ask the final questions, look for look for some, some guidance towards next year, um, because for the most part, the guys are going to be off from now on. So trying to get an interview with anybody from here on out is going to be extremely difficult. You're going to have to be lucky. Um, they're off. The CBA allows them to be off. The collective bargaining agreement um, allows them to be off. So they are not no longer required to meet any sort of press um, you know, mandates or requests or anything else. So this is absolutely it. Um, so whenever you get to go to the exit interviews, that's what you're trying to see. You're trying to talk to as many players as possible. You're trying to get as much information. Now, that's all sort of tipped to this point that the Galaxy fired Pete Vianis or announced it that morning um, and then allowed us to get the reaction from that from the players and everybody else. But, I mean, in a way, them announcing it as we're on our way to the exit interviews also softens that blow. You have all the beat reporters that are already there, so trying to write stuff and, and get, you know... Uh, poetic about some of the stuff or dive deep into this, into Pete Vianis and do long stories was sort of out because by the time we got back, um, I had 57 minutes of audio from all the people who talked. Uh, 57 minutes of audio that then needed to be transcribed. Uh, Larry did a great job and got a bunch of the big ones done. He got Zlatan and Chris Klein done, which I think together were about 26 or 27 minutes of that. Um, I handled the rest, and it took us about two days to get almost all those 6,000 words. And transcribing is a is like the thing I hate the most about being a reporter, but it's you know it's important. And actually, I like the guys who whose English is maybe their second or third language better because they speak a little bit slower. Now, imagine trying to transcribe me talking to you right now um, and how many times you'd have to stop and play. So if I talk for an hour, you basically it's going to take you three hours, maybe four hours to get all the way through my stuff. So that's sort of the uh, the stuff that we're against. And because you're doing all that, again, the, the news and probably the focus on Pete Vianis getting fired is lost a little bit. So um, I think I've put that in perspective for you already, which is that the L.A. Galaxy should have done this a long time ago. They didn't. Um, Pete Vianis is being a sacrificial lamb much the way that Kurt Anolfo was. Um, that it wasn't Kurt Anolfo's fault, necessarily, that his team was horrible. Uh, he was given a, t a horrible team. That was that was certainly the case. 
Um, and so this almost feels like whenever Donovan Ricketts finally won goalkeeper of the year, uh, it was the year before where he had, I think it was 2009, where he had the best goalkeeping season that you know anybody should have had, and he should have won MLS goalkeeper of the year, but then they gave it to him in 2010 as sort of a makeup. Um, that's what this feels like with Pete Viannis being fired. It's a makeup firing. Uh, it's a it's something that should have happened whenever Pete was lateraled last year. Um, and his influence on the team, I don't think, was any help whatsoever. Uh, Chris Klein comes out and says, you know, basically that it's they're not blaming one person. But by only moving one person, they're blaming one person. Uh, if this was a house cleaning, then it would be a house cleaning. Um, and, and so you certainly have to look at that and try to put that into into perspective whenever you're looking at all these things. So, again. Pete Vianis, now gone, no longer with the LA Galaxy. I think somebody said, you know, well, don't forget what he did as as a player. And and certainly, I think uh, Galaxy History on, on Twitter did a great job of showing some of his great goals. And, and he's uh, along the same lines now as Alexi Lawless, right? Is that you appreciate what Alexi Lawless did for the club when he was a player, and then you separate that from him as general manager and, and you know, the team going in a spiral. All right? So that's that's sort of where you put Pete there in the same way. Uh, I know lots of people call him pass back Pete. That's probably a little unfair. Uh, I think Michael Stevens probably still has uh, still has pass back. Michael Stevens is, is maybe that kid a little bit better. Uh, and I was I was a Mikey Stevens fan. Um, but no, I mean you look at all those things. So I mean that's that's where you are with the Galaxy right now. They are now down the only half general manager they had. Remember getting rid of Siggy Schmidt, who was technically we'll put in quotation marks, air quotes, was in charge of player personnel. But there was lots of interference from Chris Klein, um, from Pete Vianis. Um, and I think there has been interference from Chris, Chris Klein and Pete Vianis and Jovan Karofsky and AEG since Bruce Arena left and probably a little bit before Bruce Arena left. So when you're looking at all these things and trying to figure that stuff out, that's, that's sort of where we're sitting right now on this is that there was a lot of interference this year as well. So... If you're going to look at, at where this all went wrong this year, certainly um, I would. I think if you guys followed the podcast, I was not a believer that Siggy Schmidt was necessarily the 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 problem with this team. Now him leaving and Dom coming in and Dom putting in something had, had proved me wrong, and and I see that. But at the same time, Siggy Schmidt was trying to set up a system for the LA Galaxy and trying to do the things that now Chris Klein is out there trying to preach and do. So. You're, you're looking at, again, a reaction that's later than it should have been. Uh, Siggy Schmidt found uh, you know, deficiencies in their health program, and he found deficiencies in analytics, and he found deficiencies in scouting, and he wanted to fix all those and told he was going to be able to fix those, and they haven't been fixed. And you're going to hear some, some audio from Chris Klein that certainly leads you to believe that those are some of the issues uh, that we now have uh, with the LA Galaxy and stuff that needs to be fixed. And yeah, that's great. But again, w- this was known, you know, last year. So you're seeing a reaction to all of this stuff, and it's really, really sort of fallen away uh, to where it is. I mean, uh, it's just the Galaxy front office is a mess. It has been a mess. They haven't had the proper procedures, they haven't had the proper people in place to be able to implement what they want to do. Now, Kevin and I talked about Bruce Arena and Todd Donovan and how possibly putting some of them together uh, could give you what we would consider a good front office. Uh, Bruce Arena in that soccer ops role and the general manager in Todd Donovan sort of being underneath Bruce, under Bruce's wing. Bruce was able to do it. I think that's all thrown out the window now. Um, I really do. Uh, You'll certainly hear from Chris Klein and his comments um, you know, where they're thinking, and I got them a clarification that the person who's going to be in charge of soccer operations is also going to be the general manager. That's the same person. So you're looking at a GM and a head coach are the two things that are going to be brought in. But again, uh, deficiencies in scouting. Um, and if they don't, uh, this is a signal, and this is a big signal. If Kurt Schmidt doesn't stay with the LA Galaxy, um, I would certainly raise a hand to say that that's sort of the canary in the, in the mine, in, in the coal mine. Uh, if, if Kurt Schmidt leaves, it, it signals how unhealthy the LA Galaxy front office still is at this point. And uh, I certainly think that he's going to get offers from other places. He is, Kurt Schmidt is wanted by many, many other teams. Uh, he is a huge asset, and the LA Galaxy do not have a scouting asset outside of Jovan Karofsky. Kurt Schmidt and Jovan Karofsky are it. And I would say that if you're leaning on, if you're going to have to live and die by one of those guys, you'd rather it be Kurt Schmidt than Jovan Karofsky, who's had some big hits with Giovanni Dos Santos, uh, I guess with Steven Gerrard and with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. But uh, that's not, 
That's not what you want here. That's not building a team. That's not the scouting that you need. The LA Galaxy need a, a robust. And how is the LA Galaxy one of the crown jewels? Do, why don't they have a robust scouting department? And why don't they have an analytics department? I'm told there's not one person in an analytics department. That, that's their full-time job. And how is that not something that, that the crown jewel of Major League Soccer, the LA Galaxy, five-time MLS Cup champions, how is it they don't have that? And again, you look at all this. It, it's all a pyramid, and, and that's funny, pyramid scheme and, and herbal life. That's always fun to say. Uh, it's all a pyramid, but whenever you look, who's at the top of the pyramid right now? It has been Chris Klein. It has been Dan Beckerman. These guys are in charge of the leadership of this club. If this club continues to spiral down the drain, if mistakes continue to be made, Kurt Anolfo was a mistake if, if you're paying attention to what Chris Klein has done, right? Siggy Schmidt was a mistake if you're paying attention to what happened. Uh, they're probably not going to bring Dom back, so Dom was probably a mistake in there as well. Um, if he's not good enough to get you to the playoffs, um, which he should have been, uh, if he's not good enough to do that, then, then, then you have to label that as a mistake. Uh, so, yeah. That's 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 sort of where I want to set this all up as we get ready for audio. Listen, it's going to be audio heavy. We'll see how much of this we play, how much of this we don't play. Um, I just want to get through some of this, and, and we can start talking. But let's go first. Uh, this is from Exit Interviews, and I'll do my best to sort of moderate this for you guys and help you through it. Again, uh, I have 23 sound bites just from Chris Klein that we can play. I have eight from Roman Alessandrini, and I have 10 from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I really want to get to a bunch of these. So let's see if we can also uh, do some of this, get through it, and then uh, this will advance our talks to general manager, about the general manager, about uh, Dennis Teclosa, and, and how he could possibly be an answer for for the LA Galaxy and why it feels like the LA Galaxy are already going sideways on some of this stuff. So, uh, let's see. I, I know you want positive news, so I think if you listen to some of this, you're going to get a positive feeling, especially from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, I think he's positive. He feels like he's coming back. We'll get into that. Uh, but let's start with Chris Klein talking about the firing of Pete Viennes. Yeah, uh, I mean, always difficult. Pete's done a lot for this club, uh, both as a player and on our front office and um, but we had said, you know, we're evaluating our soccer operations and uh, certainly, again, don't rest this at the feet of one person. We all have to look at ourselves and take responsibility. Um, but um, we are going to hire a new lead for our soccer operations. Um, and I think that is uh, the big thing to come out of this, to take away from this. And, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in short order. All right, now quickly on to Chris Klein talking about if there are more changes coming, and, and it was really hinted at that are there more firings coming? Uh, are more people going to be leaving uh, that don't want to leave? Uh, and here's Chris Klein's response. Uh, that's going to be for someone to come in and, and evaluate. Um, you know, we have some good people. Uh, I think the biggest thing that it needs is it needs structure and organization and uh, clearly identifiable both internally and externally. So. Uh, I wouldn't expect uh, anything coming quickly uh, other than uh, the news of someone being hired. All right, and uh, then talking about the general manager that, uh, that could possibly be coming up, the GM, the coach. Um, you know, what are, what's, uh, what it's on, if, if there's going to be one person being the GM and the coach, um, or if they're looking at multiple people, remember we talked about Greg Berhalter coming in, being a GM and a coach. Uh, Bruce Serena has said, uh, and recently, by the way, he said that if he was to come back, uh, he would never want to have a GM and he wouldn't want to have, be a coach and a GM. He says there's too much to do. And certainly there's some... There's some something you can nail Bruce Arena on, which is, you know, he was never a big analytics guy, although that's a lie. Um, he just liked to pretend that he wasn't an analytics guy, and he likes to pretend that he's not a formation guy, and he likes to pretend that he's not a technical guy because he doesn't like explaining it to, to us simpletons. Um, and that's a little arrogance from Bruce, and it was the arrogance that he's earned from from being a, a good soccer coach at, at MLS level and, and internationally as well. And you have to throw out his last result, uh, but, you know, it, it's one thing. If you want to color Bruce Arena's entire soccer career based upon the exit of the U.S. men's national team and a rescue mission that he had, I guess you can. You're just throwing out the greatest American soccer coach that in the United States and until somebody surpasses him, which maybe Bob Bradley can um, maybe there's other guys. Maybe Greg Berhalter becomes that guy. But right now, it's Bruce Arena. Um, it's not Siggy Schmidt, uh, and it, it's not Dom Kinnear. Uh, it's Bruce Arena. And Arena liked to pretend that these things weren't important, but it was honestly, it was because his intelligence allowed uh, for some of that to uh, to just sort of melt into playing soccer. He always he knew what the tactics were. He knew what formations were. Um, he knew all of those things. So um, you know, if Bruce were to come back, there's there's no doubt about it that he would he would he has 
Um, you know, I would think that he would signal the same stuff that Siggy Schmidt saw about the analytics and about the uh, the health department, about the health um, health and safety of the players and all that other stuff. All right, let's go to uh, Chris Klein now on if it is going to be that one person. So here we go. Uh, no, I mean we're we've we've talked about that and we're looking for the right people. I, I think what you're seeing in our league and in other leagues is. Um, assembling a, a group of talented people to tackle this as a team. Uh, and we need to do that. It's not just the GM or coach. Uh, it extends through our scouting and, and certainly beyond with development and things like that. So uh, we have a number of things to do, and it, it starts with a leader in those areas. All right. And uh, now we quickly go on to, uh, to Chris Klein talking about the timeline of the hiring of this new president of Soccer Ops. I'm, I mean, I don't like to put a timeline on because then you got to stick to it. But uh, we, have, we have a lot of things to do uh, in the offseason that need to get started fairly quickly. So I wouldn't expect it to take too long. All right. The, the timeline's important. And it was basically asked, you know, this way is that you have, a t- you have a lot of things coming up. There are a lot of, you know, you have expansion drafts and you have um, disbursement drafts and all the stupid MLS drafts that you have to. You have to release and you have to exercise options on players. All these things are coming very, very rapidly for the LA Galaxy. Uh, usually that stuff happens almost immediately after MLS Cup. So the Cup is held on Sunday. It's Monday or Tuesday. You have to have your list of options that are exercised and ready to go through. So, you look at that and you say the Galaxy are behind the eight ball right now, and, and that's an important thing to sort of pay attention to. There is sincere pressure on the Galaxy to get somebody in line who's going to start making these decisions, and it's not going to be Chris Klein right now. It's certainly not going to be Chris Klein right now. Um, this is this is the important thing to remember is that you know Chris Klein is now banking on whoever he can, brings in as GM is to be that decision maker, both on on the field and off the field in terms of who they want to hire and who they want to bring on. So this person who they're looking for now is going to be in charge of the soccer ops side. This is the technical staff. This is the health. This is the analytics. This is the scouting. This is everything that you need from players to travel to everything. They are the overreaching person who is going to be in charge of that. And then you're going to have a head coach who's in charge of on the field stuff with the players that are brought in by the GM and obviously in concert with the GM. So, the hiring of this person is going to be um, a, a very big deal. Here's, uh, here's Chris Klein talking about maybe not just one person to be added. Uh, again, we're not going to lock ourselves in to, to anything, but uh, what I would say is it needs a, a group of, of talented people and not just uh, one person. I think you're seeing that across sports and certainly in our league um, that we have to build our club. Uh, and we have to structure our club in the right way to have success both in uh, 2019 and beyond. Yeah, and it's worth pointing out, by the way, Mike Gray, who's in the chat room, um, you know, saying that, you know, it it sucks that that it sounds like Chris Klein is just figuring this out. This is stuff that has been known for a while. So when you hear this, and and Kevin, you know, brought up a a sort of point is at one point, at least with me, I don't know if we ever talked about on the air, is that we've heard this type of talk before. It's, oh, we need to get it right. We need to get the structure right. We need to get these things right. Um, It's an admission of wrong, but it's not a full admission of wrong. I mean, we got most of the structure right. We just didn't have the right people. It just, it doesn't seem like those are things that that fit with what the LA Galaxy are in right. The LA Galaxy are are in a bit of a, uh, not even in a bit. Um, They're in a tailspin. They are circling down a drain right now. And without somebody yanking back on the stick pretty hard, like the aviation represents, thanks, Josh. Um, without somebody yanking on that stick back hard to, to pull them out of this dive, they're going to hit the ground. They're going to explode. And whether that explodes with Chris Klein having to be relieved of his duties, because if he goes, now you're really talking about a, a system-wide thing. And, and I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but a, a system-wide reconstruction of the entire system. But, I mean, you listen to these things, and it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, we, we all know that. Let's see, uh, let's see if we can go to, uh, let's go to this one. So, uh, where their priority lies, is it in a head coach or is it in something else? Uh, priority for me is, is to hire a leader for our soccer operations. Uh, that is first step. Uh, and then we'll go on from there. Obviously we need a coach for next year. <laughs> so that I would put that is uh, priority, um, you know, one B, uh, but first things first, and uh, then we'll continue to move through it. We have to take a look, and that will be up to that person and the group of people to take a look at um, some of the progress we made this year and, and certainly some of the, the holes and the further progress that we know that we need to make. 
All right, then I jumped in here and I asked, basically, I said, well, is this soccer operations person you're talking about, is this person also going to be a GM or are there separate roles? Remember, we had theorized and I hypothesized that perhaps you could get Bruce Arena in the soccer president, in the president of soccer ops role. You could bring Todd Dunham in the GM role and then you could hire a head coach. And now you feel like you have this structure that's there that's really ready to sort of put the galaxy on the right path. So I wanted to find out if there would be, you know, more than one person. Is it so- or are they both the GM? And here's Chris Klein's answer. Yeah, that person would be a general manager. Um, I mean, titles, there are a bunch of titles, but it will be one lead person. All right, now we transition on to Giovanni Dos Santos and whether or not Chris Klein thought that Gio would be back next year. I think there might have also been a question about a buyout in here, so uh, let's hear what he has to say. That's going to be up for someone to, to come in and evaluate. We know we have, uh, we have some very good pieces um, that, that did some good things this year, but... Uh, the team needs uh, a little bit more structure and balance, and uh, that will be up to the new coach, the new general manager, to evaluate and to make those decisions as we head into 2019. All right, now here comes an interesting one, and it's interesting because if you have been following the podcast long enough, we have walked you through what we thought was an arrogance by the LA Galaxy front office to try to distance themselves away from Bruce Arena at all costs. It's rare that you hear Chris Klein even mention the name Bruce Arena, but this one is probably the most detailed sort of look, or at least maybe the most detailed sort of admission that Bruce Arena, when he left, he created a giant hole that was behind him. So uh, here, here's Chris Klein on that. I don't know if it's start over again, uh, but I, I think what it is is since Bruce left, we were uh, a club that was um, driven by by one person on the soccer side for so long. Um, and when we had to make changes quickly, I think we got the structure right. Um, but we didn't get everything right. So uh, it is the we're going to structure our club right uh, for the short term and the long term um, so that we can succeed and the boxes have to be right and then we have to go out and get the right people. All right. So, uh, again, a a structure. uh, The structure was right. Maybe not everything was right. That means the people were wrong. That means the hires that were made were wrong. Um, So really, really, it's an admission of that we screwed some things up. That's that's good. But the admission should have come, I I think, a lot earlier than this. Now we dive in a little bit to uh, Chris Klein talking about Zlatan Ibrahimovic and whether or not Zlatan would be coming back. Now, uh, in order of things, Chris Klein spoke first, then Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and then the rest of the guys spoke. Um, So actually, that's not even true. First, it was Chris Klein. Then it was David Bingham. I believe Sebastian Legette was after that. Uh, and then maybe Zlatan came in. There was Ola Kamara talked a little bit. Uh, Roman Alessandrini. Um, I, I think that's about where how we, we sort of made our way through all that stuff. So um, understand that we had not talked to Zlatan yet and had not heard from him. So getting this information from Chris Klein was sort of our first introduction to what we thought uh, maybe we would get an answer on on uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic and, and where the mindset for the Galaxy is. So here's Chris Klein on Zlatan. I mean, our plans is uh, to have uh, Zlatan back with the club. Uh, he, I mean, what he did this year is certainly well documented, both from uh, the impact that he had on our team. I mean, I think 22 goals and 10 assists. Um, that is one thing, but uh, I'm sure he will relay this to you as well. He wants to win. Um, and we want to win with him. And so our intention is to bring him back and have him part of our club for 2019. We're going to talk a, a lot about Zlatan here as we, we roll through more audio and, and get to Zlatan sound bites and, and talk to him. But it's important to note, I'm going to tell you right now, Zlatan wants more money. He wants a designated player spot. Those seem to be things. He hasn't come out and absolutely said it. You can read between the lines. We all have. That's what he needs. However, those are almost secondary. He wants a competitive team. And it, it's so it's about the money, but it's not about the money. It's more about the LA Galaxy getting their stuff together, um, putting together a winning team, cleaning up their mess, cleaning house, and putting it together in a way that Zlatan Ibrahimovic feels like he has a chance to win trophies with. This is a guy who does not, and I repeat, does not, um, you know, lose. His, his whole legacy is not losing. His whole idea of of what this means. Um, you know, across everything is is not losing. Zlatan's core is he hates to lose. You want to know why Zlatan Ibrahimovic didn't speak to the media after the LA Galaxy lost um, on on that Sunday is because he was too angry to speak to the media. That's my I'm putting words in his mouth, but that's what that's what happened. It, it, why he didn't go around and and, and shake the, the fans' hands? He like he apologizes for it. You're gonna hear it, but at the same time, it's because he was probably too angry. He might have punched somebody. 
Um, that's not an excuse. I still think they're professionals, and they need to be out there uh, uh, thanking the fans, and I think the fans kind of got uh, stiffed on this particular one. But at the same time, I mean, that's what it is. So when Chris Klein is talking about this stuff, um, you have to understand that, you know, it's it's an important thing uh, that needs to happen. So uh, let's see. Let's go to, to clip number 12 here out of 23 for Chris Klein. I've skipped some. Don't worry. You're, you're not getting all of them. Uh, let's go to uh, number 12 and see uh, on if they're already talking with Slotton, if they're already having negotiations. Uh, I mean, we're having conversations. Uh, I know that uh, he has certain things that, that he wants, and uh, as a club, he's a priority for us to keep him here. And quickly on to if Slotton will be a designated player. Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, again, we're just in initial conversations with the season just ended a week, but uh, we've had very good conversations with him and, and continue to progress uh, in those, and hopefully we come to uh, a resolution that's good for Slotan and for the club. All right, I'm playing these in order right now. I may have skipped some, but you're basically going in chronological order. Somebody asked then, would possibly be buying out Geo's contract be something that the LA Galaxy just could do in order to get Slotan a designated player spot? Uh, we're not going to comment on uh, any individual players. Again, it will be up for uh, someone else to come in and evaluate what is the best for uh, both individual players and for the team and the club as a whole. You, you'd like to see Gio back? Uh, again, I'm not going to uh, comment on, on that. I mean, it, it really is going to take an evaluation of the team uh, with a general manager and a coach to see what this team needs so that we can be successful going into 2019. All right. Flat out was asked, would you like to see Giovanni Del Santos back? And Chris Klein, de de Chris Klein declined to comment. That is a signal. Um, because as you heard him say, he wants Zlatan back. All right. Uh, if you even hear him talk about Ashley Cole here at the end, if we even play that one, he said, oh, Ashley Cole played great. You know, whole deal. With Giovanni Del Santos, the answer is I'm not going to comment on that. All right. I'm not going to comment on that. It's a signal. It's not necessarily a clear signal. I don't want you to jump up and down about it, but it's important to note. Sometimes it's what they say. Sometimes it's what they don't say. Sometimes it's ways they phrase it. So pay attention to each of these. Parse each word. Try to understand what's going on behind the eyes and inside the brain of Chris Klein when he's saying this. I don't want to say that I want Giovanni Dos Santos to be back because we're probably going to try to move him or we're going to try to buy out his contract. We're going to try to do something. He cannot stay with this club, but I'm certainly not going to throw Gio under the bus because one he's still an asset and I have to try to sell him to somebody and if I say hey he's he's crap and we don't need him then he's worth zero and everybody knows that he's worth zero and everything else so it's one of those things it is it's important to note um Chris Klein had no problem talking about Zlatan Ibrahimovic doesn't want to talk about Giovanni Dos Santos it's absolutely true that in professional sports they rarely talk about this stuff anyway but there is clearly a an unwillingness for Chris to even say kind things about Giovanni Dos Santos um whereas in other places he would say stuff like oh well Dom is great we really liked him but blah 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 um or you know Zlatan is great you saw what he did we want him back I mean, those the, those are two contract situations that are like alike, but there are two different answers. All right, and and that's important to pay attention to. Um, let's see. Let's go to let's go to sixteen and talk real quick about Ashley Cole uh, and Chris Klein talking about Ashley Cole. Uh, we're gonna have uh, our group is gonna have individual player meetings um, today and get an idea uh, on where uh, players are at. Ashley, uh, I don't have to tell you guys, has had an amazing career. Um, he had a good season too. Um, but in saying that, he's 37 years old, so it's a conversation between uh, Ashley and the club to see what he wants and what's best for us heading into 2019. All right, and I have to jump back here. I did have a Zlatan one. This was a question for me. Um, basically, if Zlatan has an option, I, we don't have to play it, but I, I asked, there's been questions about Zlatan's contract. We all heard he was signed through 2019, but we didn't know if there was a team option or a Zlatan option, a player option. Uh, that would allow him to get out of his contract with the LA Galaxy. Actually, you know what? It is important to hear because uh, there's something that uh, that Chris Klein says here. So here's Chris Klein answering my question about whether Zlatan had a contract for 2019. No, he's got a contract for next year. So, I mean, if it came down to it, could the Galaxy hold his feet to the fire and say you have a contract? I mean, we're a club that uh, is about people. And um, uh, he's got a contract for 2019, but, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that. 
Yeah, so there you go. He has a con. Listen, here's the deal: is if Zlatan wants out, the Galaxy you are going to say you get to go. It's something Kevin and I talked about on Monday. It's a PR nightmare, but it's a worse nightmare if you sit there and go, "No, Zlatan, you can't go because we have this contract," and that makes all of the other big name players that they ever want to think starts to question the LA Galaxy. You may want to sit there and say, "Hey." Um, you're not allowed to go. You have a contract. You agreed to play for $1.5 million. But I think Zlatan has a different view on that. We'll certainly hear that on a little bit. Uh, here's Chris Klein now on whether or not they've spoken to any coaching candidates. Yeah, I mean, we've had uh, numerous conversations with, with coaching candidates. Um, but at this point, uh, we have to allow the lead person to come in and take that over because I, I believe very strongly that it is the most important partnership. And, and the head coach is going to be the person most often in front of you, um, but it has to be a partnership to build the club. And so when we get that person hired, they have uh, a good understanding of, of all the people we've talked to. That was part of our interview process, uh, and they'll take that over. All right, and quickly on to Chris Klein commenting on Dominic Kinnear and the job that he's done and whether he would uh, likely stay with the LA Galaxy. Uh, very good. Um, I mean, he came in and he structured the group. I think you saw that, uh, you know, we had a, a good team organization. We had a good team spirit uh, as well, and the guys really battled and fought. I give him a tremendous amount of credit. Um, one half uh, didn't allow us to get there, uh, but as a club, and I just said this to the guys in there, one half, yeah, we get in the playoffs. Could the team have won? Possibly. Uh, but we have to look at the whole season. So we have to go back and evaluate why we ended up uh, in that position because what we saw in the last, what was it, five games of the season, if you saw that over the course of the year, maybe. Um, but we're not in the – there's 34 games in our season and we're not in the uh, business to, to deal with maybes. All right, and then Chris Klein evaluating everything from top to bottom. He talks about uh, a little bit about you know the health and science side. He talks a little bit about the uh, the, the scouting side. There's an of course, order. I mean we have to we have to look at everything to get better. And uh, again, we talk about sports in general uh, in this country, and the evaluation is not just on uh, the coaching side, the player side. It's medical, it's data, it's sports science, it's all of these things uh that come together and that uh, sure that evaluation is on is is underway because yeah i mean we had some muscle injuries that kept reoccurring and and we have to figure out how to how to deal with those because in our league uh you need your most important players to play consistently i mean you see it uh, whether it's us or you see even with toronto this year and, and when your most important players are, are not playing uh it, it definitely hurts the team all right, and uh, let's see. We got about four more clips here. Uh, they talk real quick about would Dom uh, have a place on this team, and and would uh, would he be making that decision? It is, but I mean the name that that we've considered, uh, the name that we've said publicly is Dominic. But uh, again, someone is going to come in, and and there has to be a relationship there, and they're going to have to make the decision with the support of me, uh, and the support of ownership. All right, now comes a fun one, um, and this is an interesting one. Uh, Kevin Baxter, uh, of course, uh, co-host here on Monday nights, he came out and, and asked uh, if Pete Vienus had his job saved in the middle of the season. This is information that I believe Kevin had. Uh, he got it from a source somewhere, and he asked Chris Klein if that was the case, that at one point that uh, they wanted to fire Pete Vienus in the middle of the season and that somebody basically saved his job. Um, and I at least enjoy the answer here. Um, uh, Kevin and I are under the belief that whenever anybody says, I don't know where you get your information, uh, that it means that you're probably onto something and that they're kind of shocked that you actually pulled this one out. So uh, here is uh, Chris Klein talking about that real quick. Yeah, I don't know where you get your information from. <laughs> uh, I had a conversation with Pete this weekend. Uh, uh, again, he's been part of this club a long time and uh, incredibly professional in the way that, uh, that, that he dealt with that and won't go into the timing of our decision. But, you know, as we've talked about evaluating um, us from a structure side, from a soccer operations side, and looking at bringing in uh, a new leader, we felt that, uh, you know, it was one change we need to make to give uh, the new person a fresh start to come in. All right, uh, let's go on to now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that, though. I don't know where you get your information. Kevin Baxter, where do you get it, Panda? Uh, Panda and Patho in the morning of Van. If you miss our Monday shows, they're always fun. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Klein talking about what the structure needs to look like, and then we have one more, and we're yeah. done. Yeah, uh, good question. I mean, it, it needs it needs leadership. I am. I don't believe that that one person uh, solves everything. Uh, it needs a team. And you, you mentioned sports science. You mentioned uh, scouting. Um, you mentioned coaching. 
uh, certainly a general manager to structure the club, but it, it needs a lot. An academy director, I mean, it needs a lot to build a, a modern club. Um, and that's our ambition. Our ambition is to, to be the best and to structure our club in the right way and fill it with the right people, um, give it the right resources to be able to succeed, succeed um, and then support those people. Um, so that's the direction that we're going to take for 2019 and beyond. All right. And then finally, uh, again, what the timeline of all this is. And, and basically we're told uh, we don't get the timeline. Media doesn't get the timeline. Fans don't get the timeline. But listen, I'm here to expect that something has happened here in the next two weeks, if you're asking me. Uh, I actually thought maybe it would happen this week. I will back off on that, but I'll tell you what I think about that before we end this show. So uh, here's Chris Klein talking about that timeline. I don't want to say there's no timeline. <laughs> we have an internal timeline. I'm just not going to tell you guys. Uh, but we, yeah, we have a timeline because there are decisions that need to be made. And um, certainly we don't want to make uh, those decisions without the people that are going to be in charge heading into next year. So uh, good point. And, and our intention is to move through this as quickly as it can, but still understanding we need to make the right decision. All right. Understanding we still need to make the right decision is his last words there. Uh, that was Chris Klein's media availability for the exit interviews. Again, I played you about 95% of that. Um, I only missed two. One basically is saying that they're not going to discuss any names publicly in terms of people like Bruce Arena or Todd Dunavant, and we was asked about. Um, and I already told you about not just one person to be added. It's multiple people in different positions and blah, 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 all that other stuff. Uh, when you're looking at all that stuff, I, again, it, it's hard to feel positive about that coming out of that situation. I think Chris Klein probably said what he thought he needed to say. Um, and with that being done, you know, he you now goes and looks again. So... Uh, again, we'll we'll look at how all of that goes and and how you can continue. But you now have a roadmap for what Chris Klein says is wrong. You have a roadmap by which to judge him on if he fails. Um, and so these are all things that are in the public record now. They're all things that he has said. They're all things that you can go back and say and check against and say, hey, you said that you were going to get this done. This didn't happen. So he set the goals. He set the tick marks. And now he has to go back and check those off in order to get the LA Galaxy on the right side. Let's move on to Zlatan, right? Zlatan's a good one. We have Zlatan and Roman here. Uh, that we have uh, audio from. I didn't have Zlatan, I didn't have, get audio from everybody because we would have been here for you know two hours. Um, again, if you want to read everything that happens, go to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Full transcripts, including all this stuff, uh, is on there. You can actually follow along if you want. Um, so let's go to uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who talks in nice, long, rambling uh, ways, uh, in positive Zlatan ways. Uh, he had fun with us. He, he walked up. Uh, it's mentioned during this that he didn't know he was going to have to speak to the press today. Uh, I don't know how true that is, but if that's true, that means the LA Galaxy put together an exit interview package that said to all the media, hey, show up because Chris Klein and all the players will be available to talk, including Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and then they forgot to tell the six foot five suite. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. So, uh, if that's true, don't know. Sometimes the players just say that stuff, and they don't really mean it, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to pull off a whole bunch of interesting things. All right, let's go to Zlatan on his season individually and on, on the season as a whole. And trust me, whenever I say this goes in a million different directions, whenever Zlatan's talking about, uh, you never know. So, here's Zlatan. Uh, I think I had a good season individually. More than a good season. I mean, I scored 22 goals. I did some masses, but... Like I said, it's not a one-man show, it's collective and we didn't make it to the playoff. I think we failed in the objectives that we had. I think the last game, uh, what happened, I still don't understand what happened. And I think the fans deserved more than they got, absolutely more, and that's why I was very disappointed. I didn't want to thank them in that way. I want to thank them in... Uh, positive way in a, in a way that we give back and I think we didn't give back to them and I feel feel sorry for that because they absolutely deserve more than they got and that's why the scenes after the game was a little bit different from my side and uh, because I still don't understand what happened I think we had everything under control we won but the decisive moment became like that because of the season, how it went. And uh, I think the season was like a roller coaster. It was up and down. It was not a good season. I think when we changed the coach, we started to do things better and uh, easier. But the only thing is we had five games on us to, to win. And to put yourself in a situation like that after 25 games, 
it's not a good season, absolutely not. And uh, to fight for the sixth place, for me, to come six or seven or whatever we came, for me, is the same thing. But here you have the system where you go to the playoff. You come six, you make it to the playoff, and then you can win the whole thing. And, and this is something new to me. I'm, I'm used to come number one, and then you're the champion, and then everything is over. But here we were fighting for the sixth place. If we would have made it, everybody would have said, yeah, good season. But I still think it would have been a, let's say, a bad season. I don't want to be too negative. And, uh, and yeah, things changed when we changed the coach. So, But I'm positive. I, am, I have a good spirit. I had a couple of days. I was, I was very disappointed because, like I said, this is not the way we... We wanted to give back to the fans, especially in the last game where everything was planned, everything was set up for them to give back, and we failed to give back, and and uh, and they didn't deserve that. So today, I think everybody has a meeting, and uh, me myself, I had a meeting. So I'm positive. Galaxy, they want, and uh, and they believe they will make big changes in the club, which I think you already know some changes and. Uh, and for my own thing, let, let's see what happens. I'm in talks with Galaxy. They have wishes. I have wishes. And uh, uh, but I'm optimistic and I'm positive. All right. So one of the big things I want to take away from that. I know that was a lot to take in. I know it's Latan in his normal uh, roller coaster way, swishing and sliding side to side uh, through different topics and and different things. It feels more and more like Zlatan had fingerprints on this season, and he had fingerprints on Siggy Schmidt leaving. Um, and that he'll probably have some fingerprints on the new person coming in and everything else. I don't think that's a bad thing because I think he is motivated by winning. He's not motivated generally by image or anything else, really. I feel like he is almost 100% motivated by winning, and if it was about money, then he wouldn't have come, all right? It's clearly because it's $1.5 million. He even jokes about it a little bit uh, that maybe he came against the uh, wishes of somebody. But... It's one of those things to keep an eye on. It feels like when Zlatan is talking, he said, oh, things ha- cha- you know, things got better when we changed coach. It's just the way that he says things and the way he sort of has this definitive, yeah, we needed to change, things weren't happening, that type of thing, that it feels like Zlatan maybe had a little push on Siggy Schmidt there. Maybe that's, maybe that's totally me, and that's my opinion. I could be totally wrong. Um, but if you hear that and you don't hear, I think, the fingerprints on that move – from Zlatan being there, and at least pressure from Zlatan being there. And there is now pressure on the entire LA Galaxy organization, and that is being entirely applied by Zlatan Ibrahimovic saying he's not coming back if they're not winning. All right, let's get on. Uh, it, it, they go real quickly to uh, to what it would take for Zlatan to return. For me to return, I mean, uh, I want to be able to challenge for the, for the trophy. I said to you, I'm not here for vacation. I'm here for, for the challenge. Uh, I want to feel I have a chance to to be the best in MLS, my team, not me, because I am the best. And uh, <laughs> but I want to feel my team can compete against the other ones in a, in a good way. I think the this season was we were in a moment with the last five games. I think if, like I said, if we would have make it to the playoff. We were, we were already in that mindset, so I think we had a big chance to destroy everybody. But in the long term, I don't know how it looks like, because I'm, it's new for me here. I'm here six, seven months, so let's see. It's different conditions also. But the club knows all my wishes, all my demands, and it's up to them what they want. But they're very positive, and they, are, they have been very good to me. They have been very helpful. They, they help me, my family, with whatever I need, and I have a good relationship with everybody. And uh, and uh, let's say I'm not worried. The the point there, the I'm not worried thing is probably the biggest thing, and that he's happy here, and that the Galaxy have done everything to take care of his family. His family likes it here. He likes it here. I think that's why it sort of leads to it. And uh, Tony wrote in on on Twitter and said, uh, it's looking like Zlatan will give Galaxy another chance. A lot of positivity in the air. Uh, 538.com has his return as 83%. But should we be worried of a last-minute front office botch a la the Houston game style? Uh, Yeah, you should be worried about that. If Zlatan feels like the Galaxy don't do enough in this offseason, he's just not coming back. Uh, he'll go to AC Milan. I don't think that's even a question. All right, let's get to uh, number three. Uh, Does he need the DP slot? Does he need more money? This is up to the club what they want. I came under special conditions because 
There were no other options, but I chose to come. And uh, sometimes you need to come to, to show yourself, even if I should not, I should not do that, but okay. <laughs> Some you need to convince, and uh, I think the, the, the result speaks for itself. But, but this is all personal things. This is nothing I speak to media, and I never did it. So mm -hmm. let's just say I'm happy, my family, everything, everybody is happy, and we have a good, good time and good life here. But I'm here to, to challenge other ones. I'm not here to, to, to have a vacation, let's say. No, no vacation. No, no retiring on a beach. No Ashley Cole style there. Poor Ash. Um, but no, that, that's that's all, always again positivity. You want to take something positive out of anything that I'm telling you here tonight. Listen to Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He seems positive. He's coming back to the LA Galaxy. I think 538 has it correct. Tony, 83% seems about right. I said I would say it's 70 to 80%. Whenever I was thinking about whether or not he would come back, it feels like he wants to. The Galaxy have to live up. If Zlatan Ibrahimovic does not come back to the LA Galaxy, you'll know exactly who to blame. It won't be Zlatan. It'll be the LA Galaxy front office. And if that happens, there better be a house clearing. All right, because I'm not sure any administration can survive the fact that they had the league's biggest superstar who scored 22 goals and assisted on 10 times, a combined 32 goals coming from basically Zlatan Ibrahimovic's foot. Uh, and they let him get away because they couldn't put together a coherent and competitive front office and team. That, that, that's the big takeaway right now from this. Uh, they're asking how quickly it could happen for Zlatan in terms of a resolution. Uh, and Zlatan seems like it should happen quickly. As uh, soon as possible. I think everything is work in progress. Everybody's working, so let's see. Depends how big loan we can get from the bank. Do you have a feeling, <laughs> do you, do you have a feeling one way or the other that, that it's going to go one way or the other? There is only one way or the other way. There is nothing between. <laughs> so I don't know what to answer. Between, there is not. Do you feel that, that it's going to go one of those two ways? I say I'm not worried. Okay. Now, what Galaxy wants, you have to ask them. They want, and they said they want. So let's see what happens. I mean, I'm positive, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm here. I have another year, so I'm not worried. All right, and then on the interest from Europe. Uh, there is interest. There is no secret. There is interest. There is interest from Europe, absolutely. But my priority is Galaxy. I am here, and, uh, and I'm happy to be here. So... Uh, Interest, there will always be interest. I think you said you didn't. This is normal. This is not abnormal. Is that strange for you? No. What? When I was injured one year, then yes. But now when I'm back alive, it's not a surprise. <laughs> okay, I'm still laughing at that one. All right, Zlatan, he's like, you're surprised there's interest? Come on, it's me, it's Zlatan, right? I'm, I'm the greatest soccer player that ever lived in my own mind. Uh, I score goals like uh, my 500th goal where I karate kick chopped it into the net. Uh, I score from 40 yards out against LAFC. You shouldn't be surprised. There's interest in me. I, I don't know. I think my Zlatan impression is getting worse the more I listen to him. Um, but no, he's right. And then they talked about going on loan. You know, this is a big deal. Right? Would you go on loan with AC Milan? And he's saying no. And and <laughs> this is a guy who's not a designated player, who's not making $6 million a year. This is a guy who's making $1.5 million a year. He comes in as, you know, one of the, the biggest names in soccer since probably David Beckham was, uh, you know, around in, in Galaxy Colors. He comes in, and he speaks like he's the guy trying to make the team at LA Galaxy 2, which is my priority is the Galaxy. If I belong to Galaxy, I'm a Galaxy player. I don't go abroad and do these things, loan and this. This, for me, I don't need that. I mean... If I belong to one club, I stay in one club and I focus on that club and I pay, give all my attention to that club. So that is not in my mind. So I'm here. Like I said, we came in here. I came in. I didn't know I had to meet you guys, but yeah, I'm here for you. So, so big plans from the club for the future. They want to they wanna build up something from zero, scratch. So. That is a good sign because when things are not good, you need to make changes because it means you're not happy. And a big club like Galaxy, when they're not satisfied, you don't bring results. Changes is, is supposed to be made, and that's, that's the way it works. Yes. 
All right. So, uh, so again, Zlatan Ibrahimovic uh, talking about not going on loan, uh, talking about cleaning house. Uh, he likes that. This one was interesting. All right. You want to talk again about the fingerprints of Zlatan Ibrahimovic perhaps pushing Siggy Schmidt out the door. Uh, this could be this could be that exactly. Uh, listen to what he says about the LA Galaxy's travel whenever he was asked about the league and the expectations of the league. Part of the part of the profession you do. If it's like that, it's like that. I think the schedule before the the last five games was waste of energy. If I'm honest, too much waste of energy. Go two days before to a game has no sense because you become irritated. You waste energy for nothing. You go like the last five games we did was perfect because we came the day before. We, we train here, we go there, we play the game, we go home. That is what you need to do. Spend the energy on the right thing. A go two days before has no sense. I played in Europe. We went, we, we made traveling for five, six hours, but we made it the day before. And this is Champions League. Here we talk about a competition game in the MLS. Two games before, to do what? We go over to camp over there. We have no time. We should focus on the right things. We focus on the game and put all the energy on the game. So I think there is up and ups and down during the whole season. There is things to make better. There are things that was already good. But this is work in progress. This you get people that knows, has experience, and then it goes over everybody and they and they learn and they and they get it. So but it was a good season. I'm happy. First of all, we should not forget, I came from a bad injury. People seems like I have been alive two years ago, which I was not. I'm happy to play football. I'm very thankful for Galaxy gave me the opportunity to show myself who I am. And I'm happy that Galaxy gave you also work, so you have something to write about. Because before <laughs> I came, you had nothing to write about. You seem to have a good time, though. I mean, you seem to enjoy have, all I have. Teammates. I say everything is top, but I have some wishes. I have some demands, which is simple things. And I had meeting with the club, and they know about it. But it's nothing, nothing to worry about, of course. Because after a while, when you're happy to play football, you feel good, you are good. But with my mentality, the, the way I've, I've been doing my things, the, where I've been, of course, I want a challenge for the big things. And that is what I want. I don't want to be here just to be open for the media and, and do my things. I want to be on the field and challenge for the big things. That is how I make the fans satisfied. That is how I give back to the fans, not so by... You like LA, right? I mean, you like the lifestyle, you seem to... Yeah, yeah, everything is cool. So LA likes me, that's more important. <laughs> huh? The quality of the league, is that what you expected? The quality on the league, it doesn't matter. I had uh, many interviews yesterday, I said, this season for me was about me playing my game, it was about me feeling free to play the way I play. Then if they say MLS, if it's a lower level, higher level, doesn't matter. The way I feel now, you put me wherever you want, Premier League, Serie A, wherever, I will do the same thing. So it has, it has nothing to do if it's low level or high level. I think the level in MLS, they have, they have a lot to learn, which they're doing. The league is not historical old, but it's becoming better and better. They have a lot of rules that you have to follow with all the respect for the rules. And um, slowly they will get where they want to come. And, and I want to be part of the puzzle that brings them where they want to come. All right, a, a long meandering sort of, uh, of answers there and a couple different questions, but I, I think that gives you an idea. Finally, uh, let's see uh, Zlatan on what his demands are from the Galaxy and finally on if he wants Dom back. Uh, no, I think when it comes to those things, I don't discuss in media. You will know when the time is, is there to know, so let's see. I think Dom did a great job. He did a good job. Uh, he did a good job uh, under different environment, if you understand what I mean. It's not his. This was somebody else. He took over. And uh, I think f he showed he should have a possibility, a chance to show himself under his circumstances, under his, let's say, his team, his people, because now he took over in somebody else's hands, let's say. So but I think he did a good job. Last game, I think 
I still don't understand what happened, so if somebody has an answer for me, please tell me. And uh, I think we slipped by the goal line, but same there. The season should not depend on one game. The season is 30 games. We cannot blame one game that we didn't make it. We should blame the whole season because the whole season was like a roller coaster. It was moments fantastic, it was moments very bad. And, and I think we learned from this, hopefully, and we bring it further and we make it better because that is the target to make it better. Yeah, I thought it was funny as Laton continued to ask uh, throughout it whether or not we could explain what happened to the last game. Um, it, it, if he would have asked me directly, I would have said, yeah, uh, you need to score more goals than the other guy. Um, that's what that's what happened. But they were up 2-0, uh, and uh, and that's where, it, that's where it ends. Okay, let's move on now. Uh, we have one more person I want to get to, the audio, and then we have some other things to, uh, to tie up. So, like I said, uh, maybe the show goes an hour, maybe the show goes 90 minutes. Uh, it's sort of an update that you need to have for this LA Galaxy team, and so I want to make sure that you get it. Um, here's uh, Roman Alessandrini talking about what went wrong uh, this season and how he is going to handle the, uh, this particular offseason. Um, for a player, it's always, you know, difficult to to finish uh, a season like that um, because we wanted to to get into the playoffs, and uh, now we have just to move forward, see what's gonna happen um, in terms of uh, the players, the coaching staff, um, because there will be a lot of changes. So. We're gonna see, um, but we have to be. I think uh, we want to be better. Uh, we have to get better, uh, the club and the team. So now we are just to to get some rest and be focused for the next season. All right. So uh, Romana Sandrini talking a little bit there. Uh, by the way, it's windy outside. I know you probably can't hear it on the podcast. It is, it's getting pretty howly outside, uh, and the lights have already flickered once or twice, so I wouldn't be surprised if this whole show goes sideways uh, before the end of the night is done and we lose complete power here, but uh, let's try to get through uh, the rest of this before that happens. Uh, I'll pick some other Roman ones because I don't want to just uh, stick on this one the whole time. Um, it was asked if Roman Alessandrini wants to leave the LA Galaxy, uh, knowing that his last two seasons have gone He's played well, but the team hasn't, so maybe he'd like to move on. No, no, I want to stay here. I want to play for this club. Uh, I feel I feel good here. And when I was in Marseille, it was a little bit difficult for me because I got a lot of uh, injured. Um, but here, I feel good. I play, uh, I score, I give assist. Uh, as I say, collectively, it's difficult. But personally, I feel, I feel very good and I want to stay here. I want to... I want to be here the next few years, so we'll see. Yeah, next few years for Ramon Alessandrini. Listen, if you want to talk about anybody who loves this team more, it would be hard to find anybody on the team than Ramon Alessandrini. Um, a guy who stayed all of last season through the off season and stayed in Los Angeles to work out and to get better and to get back in shape and to be ready for the season. Uh, a guy who is going to take some time and go back to Marseille for the holidays this year. Um, rightfully deserved, by the way. Uh, a guy who needs to get healthy again and, and rest and relax and, and see some things uh, and see his family out there. Um, I asked him about the rumors about Montreal. We've heard Montreal is possibly interested in Roman Alessandrini, so I asked him if he had heard anything about that. Yeah, uh, I heard a little bit these rumors, you know, but I try to to be focused on my team, uh, LA Galaxy. I don't know what uh, the club wanna wanna do with me, but I have one year more here, and I wanna stay. I told you I wanna stay more here, maybe two or three years, but it's not my choice again. It's it's the club. So me, I try to give the best I can. Uh, I'm here to give assist and score goals. Uh, since two years, I think uh, I do I do a good job, but it's not it's not my job to to decide this, you know. So I heard about that, but I'm focused on my on my on my club, and uh, I'm I feel very good here in LA Galaxy. All right, uh, and then I thought uh, it was interesting on, on one of these. Um you know, on what have been the issues over the last two years that have really prevented the LA Galaxy from being successful, according to Ramon Alessandrini, and then we'll move on from Ramon, who definitely wants to stay in LA, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about those options and things. But here's Ramon talking about what went wrong over the last two years. It's difficult to say, um, 
because we worked so hard um, this year to get into the playoffs. But um, during the last two years, a lot of things change, and it's hard, you know, when you have new new players, new coach uh, every year. So you don't have the the same chemistry, you know. So I think, as I said, if we if we keep the same the same team, maybe with two or three players more, we we're gonna be better. And I'm, I can say that, like next year we get into the playoff and maybe we're gonna win this championship because we have the player to 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 win this championship. All right, uh, there you go, Roman Alessandrini. Now, uh, one of the other people I want to highlight on here that I don't have audio for, mostly because he spoke in Spanish, so it wouldn't do uh, me much good to try to figure that all out. Um, so it has been translated and transcribed on the Corner of the Galaxy website. Again, cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can read every player's every comment. I suggest you do it. Uh, it gives you a great insight into what you do, and we're going to continue to try to put more of that uh, 100% transcription onto the website as best we can. It takes a ton of work to transcribe all this stuff. Uh, but I think it gives you much better without us trying to twist anything, without us trying to put quotes into context, uh, you're able to read exactly what it says. But I will tell you this, Jonathan Dos Santos was speaking. Uh, he said that Gio wants to stay. That's one of the more important things. He also said um, that if Giovanni Dos Santos were to leave, that Jonathan would still like to stay. Here is the interesting. Here is his opening quote, or excuse me, one of his qu closing quotes um, in the second to the last question that he was asked on whether their futures are tied to each other if the team decided to buy out Geo's contract. I'm going to read you a very small part of it. Well, I still have three more years here on my contract here. We know what Giovanni can offer. We honestly have not thought of that about the team wanting to sell him. I think Giovanni has to be here. He's a great player. He's an important player for us. I missed him the whole season. Uh, the whole team missed him a lot this past season. I would not depend on that decision on whether the team no longer wants Giovanni Dos Santos in the Galaxy. I do not think that that would happen. For me, Giovanni is a player who has to be here. Um, okay, take whatever you want from that thing. But here's the most important thing you said that, that was said. Uh, and I don't have a clear answer for you, so I'll explain a little bit. Uh, Jonathan Dos Santos says at the very beginning, well, I still have three more years here on my contract. He says, I still have three more years here on my contract. Now, whenever Jonathan Dos Santos was signed, we knew he, we were told uh, that he was signed through 2019. All right, 2019. Uh, that now seems like it might be in question. Uh, was he given a five-year deal? Was he given an extension to his Villarreal deal, which was through 2019, and then he got two more years after that, so he's now through two, 2021? But the difficulty with long-term contracts, and Giovanni Dos Santos didn't get a five-year deal whenever he came. He got a you know two-year deal and a three-year deal. That's how it ended up being five years. But Jonathan Dos Santos... With three more years. Now, there's a chance that Jonathan Dos Santos is incorrect about it, and I've certainly asked the club about it. I don't know if we'll ever get a straight answer about it. I I've been working on it now for two days. Um, but he says he has three more years. He could be wrong. He could mean that he only has one more year left, and he just misspoke. I asked them to double-check the translation, and the translation was correct. Um, so that is, that is where it sits. So three more years. Um, that is something that you need to pay attention to. It's not anything I have an answer for you on, but I, I want to raise the question now. As you're trying to move designated players for Zlatan Ibrahimovic, and we talk about trying to move Giovanni Dos Santos, clearly if you're looking at the, the things, you know that Zlatan wants a designated player spot. You know that Giovanni Dos Santos has the most expensive designated player spot the Galaxy have, and they pay him $6 million a year, likely to be $6.5 million in 2019. Um, that's how his contract has been ratcheting up. So I expect another $500,000 and it to be six and a half million dollars in 2019. Um, so if you're doing that, the, the number one way to get to do this and keep everybody happy, including the fans is to move Giovanni Dos Santos. The second way of doing that is to go in and either buying out Giovanni Dos Santos, contract, send them on loan. Um, you could probably do that as well and open up a designated player spot. Um, you can sell transfer trade, loan, or buy out Giovanni Dos Santos' contract. If you can't do any of that stuff, Roman Alessandrini is the next guy who goes. Now, whether that means, and there's there's certainly somebody brought this up about buying down, um, you know, uh, a Roman Alessandrini's contract. What you'd have to do is you'd actually have to void his contract, um, and then you'd have to sign him to a new contract. Now, you might be able to tell Roman Alessandrini, hey, listen, you're getting older. 
Uh, we pay you $2 million a year right now. What we're offering you is that we'll pay you $1.5 million, but instead of your deal being over next year, what we're going to do is we're going to give it to you for another three years. So we're going to give you $1.5 million for the next three years, and that'll keep Ramon Allison Drini happy. He gets to make up the – he loses a little bit but gains it on the long term. So he's going to lose $500,000, but now instead of you know his contract being up next year and him having to go search for something, he's now guaranteed another $3 million after this next year. So you've taken $500,000 away, but you've given him $3 million whenever you look at the length of the contract. So uh, it's tough to do to a guy like Roman, or you trade Roman to Montreal. That's that's another way you could do it, and then Zlatan now has it. But you're stuck with Giovanni Dos Santos, which I think is a PR nightmare uh, and not something that you want the Galaxy to do. Losing Zlatan is a PR nightmare. Keeping Giovanni Dos Santos tends to be a, a, a PR nightmare. Um, so the Galaxy have to be very careful, and wh- whoever is going to be brought in has to take a look at that. Uh, David Bingham spoke. Ola Kamara spoke. Uh, Ola Kamara is another guy who who bleeds for this team, and you can see it. David Bingham loves playing for the LA Galaxy uh, and, and loves being in goal, and he played all 34 games this year. You can do a lot of things. You can blame um, him for some things, and, and I don't think he's the smoothest of goalkeepers. I don't think he's the best of goalkeepers in Major League Soccer, but he's not the worst. Um, and he's moderately paid. The LA Galaxy are, are in the middle of the pack in terms of how much they pay their goalkeepers, and I think with a better defense, he will be a lot better. Um, so if the Galaxy can get that right, I, I think David Bingham will be you know one of the top five, top six goalkeepers in Major League Soccer, and that's good enough, quite honestly, to win you an MLS Cup. Um, so you just need to fix the defense. Defense was the bigger problem uh, than anything else. So that's sort of where we went with exit interviews. I left there feeling positive that Zlatan Ibrahimovic would come back. Uh, I left there feeling kind of neutral on the direction the LA Galaxy are currently setting themselves in. I think, you know, uh, firing Pete Viennes was a positive and something that needed to happen, even if it was late. Um, it's it's just it's one of those one of those crazy things that sort of sits there. Remember, uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is being paid with targeted allocation money right now. The ceiling on that is one point five million dollars. You can't pay any more any more. Uh, you can't play one per, one player any more than one point five million dollars in targeted allocation money. That is the max. So if you can move Roman there, you can move Ibra up. You could technically keep Giovanni dos Santos. Just you get rid of Giovanni dos Santos and go buy other DPS. Um, that's really the, the the key for this, and I think you heard it in Chris Klein's comments, um, refusing to sort of comment on Geo's future, but feeling more than uh, more than delightful to co- to, uh, to comment on Zlatan Ibrahimovic's future there. All right, let's get to s- some of the last stuff that we have here. Um, this is this is the the important stuff, and we have a, a couple questions, and, and Ben Ben went in and, and tweeted at us and asked about uh, uh, buying out Geo and keeping Jonah and Roman and whether that would be ideal. And that is sort of the idea. They want to keep Jonah. Um, I think if you saw how they played with Sebastian Legette and, and Jonathan Dos Santos in the center, you want to keep that pairing together for 2019. And I think them playing together all season is interesting. I think it puts Perry Kitchen in a difficult position because he no longer has a spot. Now you're paying, I think, $470,000 uh, to Perry Kitchen to sit on the bench. But these are the decisions that have to be made. Um, as Kevin would say, your your payroll is your payroll. It doesn't matter whether you play them or you sit them. Uh, it is what it is. It's true, but you need to get value out of those expensive players, which would be my counter. Uh, and Ben also asked about buying down Roman's contract, which I, I think I put in there. Now, Stan, Sam Steschkel, uh, who reports for MLSsoccer.com, he is a contributor there. He does not work for the league. So whenever Sam is reporting, he's reporting independently from the league, which is good because uh, Sam does a great job. Um, here we go. Uh, he is reporting that the Galaxy are interested in hiring uh, Dennis DeClose as general manager. DeClose is currently the director of Mexico's national teams. Um, that's a role he's had since last August, and he oversees, as Sam says, and I'm almost quoting his article, go to MLSsoccer.com uh, if you want to read Sam's uh, excellent reporting. Uh, but he oversees all administrative aspects of the men's and women's national team from the senior sides down through the under-15s. Um, prior to that, Teclosa served as director of Mexico's youth, youth national teams, um, during which the country won the men's gold medal at the 2012 Olympics and twice reached the semifinals of the U-17 World Cup. Uh, he is a native of the Netherlands and uh, and uh, is a Dutch youth uh, international at the U-17 and U-20 levels. Uh, Teclosa was also, as I'm sure you all want to know, uh, linked with Chivas de, Chivas de Guadalajara at one point and Chivas USA. Um, just in case, listen, the, the Chivas USA thing is important, and it's important for a very uh, interesting reason, which is that you need somebody in that general manager role who understands Major League Soccer. Now, 
the rules have changed so dramatically since the close was was anywhere near uh, Major League Soccer, and I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing his name right, but you'll all you'll all fall fall in line with that, and we'll figure it out eventually. Then I'll say it correctly. Um, but it, he was in there, and the rules have changed so much that maybe it's not a boon. Maybe it's not something that you can raise a flag and say he has MLS experience. But uh, DeClosa was in charge of uh, of Chivas USA um, in that sort of general manager role there um, through 25 to 2005 to 2008. Now during that time. He gets there in 2005. Chivas USA finished last in the Western Conference in 2005. They finished third in the Western Conference in 2006. They finished first in the Western Conference in 2007. And they finished second in the Western Conference in 2008. So uh, his track record inside MLS is is fairly good. You know, with Guadalajara, um, he's done some good things as well. Uh, so... You know, he's been with the Mexican Federation uh, in, I think, maybe since February of 2014 and, and done a lot of stuff. He's he's a highly regarded for his youth development. Um, so this is a guy who does have some credentials back behind him. Now, uh, Univision uh, is saying that uh, the, a contract was offered to him. I will tell you this. I believe the Galaxy have already offered a contract to, to Closa. I don't believe that he has accepted that. Uh, if he would have, I think there would have been an announcement already. But that could happen. Um, I don't see. He may have rejected a contract and said, this isn't what I want. Um, maybe that's for good, or maybe that's we need to still need to negotiate. I think that if you're looking at this, this is where the fire is right now. And if uh, if Sam Steschkohl is reporting it, it is because uh, it, it is because the, the Galaxy are focused on something. That also means that Bruce Arena, who was... Uh, you know, leaked and linked to the LA Galaxy um, would not be coming back to the club. It also means that Todd Dunham, who apparently was linked and leaked uh, to the LA Galaxy, would not be coming in as well. Uh, Tocoso would be in charge as the general manager, and then you would have to find uh, a guy like uh, a head coach. Maybe it's Dominic Kinnear. Maybe it's somebody else uh, to come in. Uh, Tocoso was also possibly uh, a f- one of uh, five finalists for the San Jose Earthquakes GM job following uh, the 2016 season. So he's a guy whose name has been in and around the LA Galaxy. Um, I'll tell you that I don't believe the front office is entirely set on the direction that they want to go. I'll tell you that the front office doesn't seem like they're set and understand the difficulty that they're going to have this season and bringing in a new general manager and then letting that person hire a coach. Uh, they're already fall they're they're already behind the eight ball and i've already said that once or twice and maybe it's a new drinking game every time i say that uh they're already falling behind uh in terms of things that they need to do so getting in a general manager is good but under that pressure they're going to be forced into some mistakes Uh, i don't know if they're treating the overall environment around them with the kind of care that they need to. And that goes with talking to coaches and talking to guys who could be possible GMs and whether or not they're showing them the respect that they deserve. So pay attention to the LA Galaxy as we continue to follow them uh, here on the show and everything else um, as we go down and sort of see where they're going. I would expect that within the next two to three weeks, I think three weeks on max, uh, you're going to see the LA Galaxy hire a general manager. I would expect that sooner rather than later. Um, And then the head coaching job sort of starts and you have to figure out who you're going to hire and everything else. Um, So the the coaching question, which I, I know this chat room is asking who we uh, who 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 possibly could be that coaching guy. Um, it's, it's, it's going to totally depend on who the GM is. So just pu- push it aside right now. Um, it's not happening. You're not going to find out. Um, and I think it's impossible to say which direction you want to lean until you know who the general manager is and possibly what style that general manager has. I still would find it, um, difficult to believe if Ali Curtis's name did not pop up on the LA galaxy's radar and they didn't talk to him, but we haven't heard that publicly. Um, I still think that I think that, uh, you know, I, this article in particular and Sam reports this says that it's unlikely that Bruce Arena would be hired for this position. Um, so if you're thinking about Bruce coming back, uh, it doesn't seem like that's a that's a possibility. So that's where we sit right now with the L.A. Galaxy. I hope that the exit interview stuff was interesting for you. I know we went through a lot of audio, uh, probably less talking for me than is normal, which I'm sure you enjoyed. Uh, but uh, hopefully we did a good job with that, and I'm glad we could bring that to you uh, as this long off season now starts. It's a long off season that should be very, very busy. So we'll be sticking on top of that. Uh, that means.
means that a show on Monday is upcoming with Kevin Baxter back uh, with us. And then uh, probably another li- live show next Thursday. Uh, we'll play it by ear, though, if there's not a lot of news that breaks over the uh, over these next couple of weeks. Because remember, we're not going to get to talk to players. We're not going to get these things. So really, it's about the developments around the club in terms of the general manager, the coaching and front office staff and all that stuff. As that stuff develops, we'll see if we have our Thursday shows. But right now, we're scheduled to always have a Monday show, and that's how we're going to keep it for the foreseeable future. Go to cornerofthegalaxy.com, click on the live link. The live link right there will take you to our our show schedule, and I try to update that. Sometimes it gets updated the day of the show. What can I do? Uh, you know, I'm busy doing other things sometimes. Um, but that's that's sort of where we stand. So uh, I hope everybody enjoyed uh, that particular look back at the exit interviews. Uh, hopefully it was uh, what you needed to sort of put this season to rest, and maybe it gives you a little more optimism for the LA Galaxy or certainly for Zlatan Ibrahimovic coming back. All right. Uh, I think that about does it for us tonight. Uh, again, if you're looking for me on Twitter, it's at Jay Guessman, J-G-U-E-S-M-A-N, and, of course, at Galaxy Podcast. Uh, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com uh, for all of our articles, all of the information, the up-to-date stuff that we're bringing you right there. All right. I'm Josh Guessman. You've been listening to Corner of the Galaxy on cornerofthegalaxy.com. I hope everybody has a great weekend. We will catch you on Monday. Have a great one, everybody. You've been listening to the Corner of the Galaxy podcast on cornerofthegalaxy.com. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Galaxy Podcast. And be sure to check out and subscribe to iTunes, Stitcher, and Facebook by searching for Corner of the Galaxy. And for all of your independent LA Galaxy news, discussion, and entertainment, including this podcast, head on over to cornerofthegalaxy.com. Fans, thanks for listening. We ask that you be kind and courteous to your neighbors as you leave the podcast. We thank you for joining us and look forward to seeing you again. Until then, I'm Michael Araujo, and on behalf of the entire Corner of the Galaxy crew, goodbye, everybody.